Disaster recovery exercises help ensure that you can transition seamlessly to your backup environment in time of need. This video provides a disaster recovery sample exercise for CyberArk Privileged Access Management, PAM. Before we dive into the exercise itself, let's look at the solution architecture and an overview of the automatic failover process. A standard CyberArk PAM architecture consists of a primary vault and a disaster recovery vault. The PVWAs, PSMs, and CPMs, which we refer to as the components, communicate with the primary vault. At the beginning of the disaster recovery exercise, the private ARC server service, which is responsible for providing the main back-end vault service to the components, is started on the primary vault and stopped on the disaster recovery vault. The CyberArk disaster recovery service is an additional software component that can be installed on the Vault server. The DR service is responsible for replicating data and metadata from the primary vault to the DR vault. At the beginning of the exercise, the DR service is started on the DR vault and stopped on the primary vault. In the event of a failure in the primary vault, the DR service can trigger an automatic failover process. By the end of the process, the private ARC server service is started on the DR vault and the DR service is stopped, effectively turning the DR vault into the new primary vault. The components can be deployed as active nodes in the primary site and have a cold standby node in the DR site. Cold standby nodes allow you to manually turn on these backup components in the event the primary site goes down. However, Many organizations often take the approach of having active, active load balance components, meaning that the PVWAs and PSMs in both the primary and DR site are all active and configured to communicate with the primary vault. The PVWAs and PSMs can be configured to automatically fail over to the DR vault in case the primary vault fails. This allows end users to maintain secure access to critical systems via CyberArk without human intervention. The CPMs must not be configured for automatic failover because, if for some reason the primary vault were to come back online, the CPMs might begin changing passwords there, creating what we call a split-brain phenomenon. Connecting the CPMs to the DR vault is a manual procedure and should only be done if resuming automatic password rotation is a critical control that needs to continue prior to bringing your primary vault back online. In the following exercise, the PVWAs and PSMs have all been configured to automatically failover. Note that manual failover of the CPM will not be tested in this exercise. During the exercise, the roles of the two vaults will be reversed twice. To keep track of which vault is primary and which vault is DR, we will refer to the original primary site as the New York site and the original disaster recovery site as the San Francisco site. In the first step of the exercise, we will configure the disaster recovery service on the DR server in San Francisco to perform an automatic failover in case the primary vault in New York is no longer reachable. In the second step, we will trigger a full replication of data from the primary vault in New York to the DR vault in San Francisco. In the third step, after confirming that the full replication of data has been successfully completed, we will trigger an automatic failover by stopping the private ARC server service on the primary vault. We will confirm the private ARC server was successfully started on the DR vault and that the PVWAs and PSMs have automatically failed over to the vault in San Francisco. For the failover test to be considered a success, we need to ensure that our end users can still access critical systems via CyberArk without any human intervention. In the fourth step, 
After ensuring that the automatic failover test from New York to San Francisco has been successfully completed, we will set the vault in New York to act as DR and replicate all data from the San Francisco site back to the New York site. Effectively, New York now becomes the DR site with San Francisco acting as the primary site. In the fifth step, we will perform a manual failback in New York. By the end of the process, the private ARC server service is started on the New York vault, and the DR service is stopped. Note that our PVWAs and PSMs are still connected to the vault in San Francisco, while the CPM remains offline for the entire duration of the exercise. In the final step of the exercise, we will set the vault in San Francisco back to DR mode. The PVWAs and PSMs will automatically fail back to the New York vault. The CPM should also resume the connection to the vault in New York once it is back online. After confirming that our end users are still able to connect to critical systems via CyberArk, the exercise is complete, with New York acting once again as the primary site and San Francisco as the DR site. Watch additional CyberArk videos to learn how to perform each step of the exercise in detail. For more information, check out our online resources.